Hello YouTube and welcome to this short tutorial about a product by Gobi. I think it's called Gobi, Gobe. I have no idea, but I think it's Gobi because the company is from Australia. And um, it's about ND filters today. Why do you actually need ND filters? Let's speak about this question first. You may know the photos where a waterfall flows down a mountain and it seems to be just one big layer of water. Or if you're standing in front of a big beach and the sun is rising or there's a big sunset in front of you, the waves are coming towards you and someone was taking a photo and the water seemed to be like just one big layer instead of single waves. These kind of photos were taken with a, a long exposure time, probably a closed aperture and using an ND filter. Why do I need an ND filter? Not for long time exposures, because I'm not doing long time exposures, but I do need an ND filter for filming. Why? When I'm outside and it's bright outside like today and the sun is shining and I'm using all my fast aperture lenses like my 24 f1.4 or my 70 to 200 mm f2.8 or the ones that I'm filming at the moment, which is the 35 mm f1.8, I want to have that blurry background and to get that of course I need to open the aperture. I have fixed shutter speeds since I'm filming and my ISO is already down at 160 or 320 and that's why I need to steal my camera a bit of light. And how am I gonna do that? Using one of these ND filters. That's a variable one with a 70 millimeter filter thread for my 24 and the 70 to 200 millimeter. And let's have a look at how the filter performs. Here is the box um, I got the filter in that's um, made of aluminum, which is pretty cool. When I turn it backwards, it says 77 millimeter. Let nature be your teacher, ooh. And on the lower side, it says Gobi, designed in Australia, assembled in China. I think I know that phrase from another Californian company. So let's turn it around. It's pretty nice that they give you an extra case. It seems to be quite stable. Here is the ND filter. Obviously, I was using it the last week already. So I know how it's performing. And of course, a little wipe to get rid of all the dust. Here is one lens I will use the ND filter with. That's the Canon 24mm f1.4 L Mark II. And we need a 70 millimeter filter for this lens. Here's the next lens. That's the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 L Mark II, which is a pretty cool lens. And I do have already a filter on that lens. As you can see, it's by Hoya. It's just a protective filter. And let, let me see. Yep. As you can see, it works together with the ND filter here as well. If I turn it that way, it opens. If I close it, I have to turn it the other way. And if I close it even more, it will reopen again. Here's the filter in detail. As you can see, here is minimum. If I turn it towards the other side, it says maximum. 77 millimeter filter thread. And it's by Gobi. Ah, now it's in focus. Sweet, as you can see, here's the ring. Now at the moment I will have a lot of light inside my camera. If I turn it that way, I will close it. So basically less light is coming through my lens now. And if I turn it even more, it will reopen again. One thing I noticed during my one week trial is that the lens cap gets loose quite quickly. So if you have some movement, you can get rid of it quite quick. And that will, if you have a lot of things inside your camera bag, will hurt the front element of that filter or the lens. So make sure to have a proper camera bag with you because you don't want to have a scratched filter or a scratched front element. Now you will see a lot of examples I took during my last week and enjoy. Some of them are available in the video description below for download.
So I hope that video helped you to make a decision if that filter suits your needs. If you have any further questions, make sure to post a comment below. Please let me know for what are you using ND filters. And the link to that ND filter is obviously in the video description below. Thanks and all the best from Frankfurt.